Our hearts bleed when we see that the world does not forget. When recollections come back and are so many and so painful. In some they are the dreadful nemesis that always throws our crimes in our faces and promises vengeance in the hereafter, says one. They are the cries of those whom I struck to make them work, although they were exhausted. They are the curses of those I enslaved after taking all their properties through usurious practices. They are the entreaties of widows and orphans who could not afford to pay and whose last belongings I had sequestered in the name of the law. They are the cruelties accomplished in conquered countries against defenceless people terrorised by their defeat. They are the tears of my mother, of my wife, of my daughter, who died of privations while I was squandering everything in banquets. They are, oh, there's no name for my crime. Lord, my hands are not stained with blood. I did not steal money. I did not impose exorbitant taxes. I did not fleece anybody. I did not strike the defeated enemy. But I exploited all miseries and I made money at the expense of innocent girls of the beaten enemy, of orphan girls, of women sold like merchandise for a piece of bread. I travelled round the world seizing such opportunities, following armies where there was famine, where an overflowing river had deprived people of food, where pestilence had left young lives without protection, and I treated them as goods, infamous yet innocent goods, infamous with regard to me, as I made money out of it, innocent, because they were not yet aware of so much horror. Lord, I have in my hands the virginity of young girls seduced and the honour of young wives taken in conquered towns. My trade centres and my brothels were famous, Lord. Do not curse me now that you know. The apostles have unintentionally moved away from the last man who has spoken. Jesus stands up and approaches him. He lays a hand on his shoulder and says, It is true, your crime is grave. You have much to redress. But I, the mercy, tell you that even if you were the demon himself and you were responsible for all the crimes of the earth, if you want, you can make amends for everything and be forgiven by God, the true, great, paternal God. If you want, join your will to mine. I also want you to be forgiven. Join me. Give me your poor spirit, so ill-famed, ruined, full of scars and disheartened after you abandoned sin. I will put it on my heart where I place the biggest sinners and I will take it with me to the redeeming sacrifice. The holiest blood that of my heart, the last blood of him consumed on behalf of men, will be shed on the greatest ruins and will regenerate them. Have hope for the time being. Let your hope be greater than your immense crime in the mercy of God, because it has no limits, O oh man, for those who can trust in it. The man would like to take and kiss the hand resting on his shoulder, so pale and thin against his brown garment, and his strong shoulder, but he dare not. Jesus understands and stretches out his hand saying, kiss the palm of it, man. I will find that kiss again and it will cure my torture. A kissed hand, a wounded hand, kissed out of love, wounded for love. Oh, I wish all men could kiss the great victim and the great victim could die in its clothes made of sores, knowing that in each are the kisses, the love of all men redeemed. And he holds his hand, pressed against the clean-shaven lips of the man, who, judging from his overall appearance, I would say, 
is a Roman. He holds it there until the man moves away as if he were sated with it after quenching the parching thirst of his remorses by drinking the mercy of the Lord in the hollow of the divine hand.